What's up, everyone? Welcome to Unmasked, where things are discovered, uncovered, brought to the light, and made known. I'm your host, Lamar Barrett, coming live to you from PG County, Maryland. If you're interested in finding out about the untold stories behind being a college coach, this is the show for you. Being a former assistant men's college basketball coach for 16 years, there are so many untold stories behind the scenes in the life of a college basketball coach. Now, let's unmask them. Today's guest is a young and bright assistant coach, a future head coach in this business, and a Hampton Roads, Virginia native. And when I say we got a group in Hampton Roads 757, for a lot of people that don't understand, you, you, you it's so ingrained in the seven cities that you have to all just always say 757. So uh, I want to welcome Carlton C.J. Clemens. You won't hear me call him Carlton the rest of the show. Everybody knows him as C.J., but I want to welcome to the show, and then I'll read a little bio on him first. Uh, C.J. graduated from North State uh, 2005, and then uh, after that, he went back to his alma mater, worked at Salem uh, High School for a few years before heading over to Booger T for five years. Uh, so he had a chance to work with Bill Cochran, who, who was at, um, at Salem, and then he had a chance to go and work for Darren Salem as an assistant coach uh, you know, for five years. Uh, and then from, from leaving Booger T, uh, and at the same time, he was coaching with Boo Williams AAU program uh, from 2009 to 2015. And then he actually goes to Brian and Strat, and he becomes the head coach uh, with the exception when they went from just being a citywide league uh, program to now being a junior college program. So he started that up when they transitioned over to junior college. Uh, he was there for two years, did an excellent job there for two years. And now, he presently, for the last five years, he's at Norfolk State uh, University. Um, and I want to say uh, welcome to the show to a, to a good friend and uh, C.J. Clemens. What's up, man? How you doing today, man? Everything everything good good with you? Everything is good, man. You know, we're just trying to, you know, deal, be, stay safe and, uh, you know, and, and, and be out of harm's way, man, from this pandemic. But everything else is good, man. No complaints. That's, that's good, man. That's that's good, man. I'm glad to be on the show, man. Glad I appreciate you, call, you man. coming on, man. I appreciate yeah. you coming on. Yeah, anytime, um, man, you know. You know what, man? Let's get right to it. Let's go ahead and get unmasked, man. And and, and I like to um, start off. I always like asking this question. Um, you know, you get into you, – you, you, you've been on the college side when you started your program, and now you go to Division One. So – it's a little right. different. Um, right. There's no handbook. There's no handbook to how you be a college basketball coach. Um, tell me about that first day, the first week, first month, when, um, you know, you, you, you're done with human resources, you're done with orientation, especially if no one gives you direction. Tell me what that was like. Um, well, that, you know, that first day, you know, the first week, you, you trying to, you know, get your feet wet. It was a little bit easier for me because I was an alum of Norfolk State, so I kind of knew my way around the campus and knew knew a lot of the you know faces on that were still around. So that part was a little easy, but just you know you trying to figure out what your head coach exactly wants from you because it's I mean like you say it's no handbook. So you know I'm trying to figure out do I grab some of the players and 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 get in the gym and work out because I got on during the summertime um, actually late late summer. So a few of the players were still hanging around. And, um, but it's, it's, it's definitely a, a uneasy feeling, you know, and when you don't really, nobody tells you, Hey, do, do this, do that from nine to 10, from 10 to 11. Now you're going to do this, you know, it's just kind of going with the flow and just seeing what everybody else is doing. I um actually leaned on Larry, Larry Vickers a lot during that time. He was on staff. So me and him were already friends. So I would, you know, ask him, like, you know, is it anything I, I'm supposed to be doing right now? Or is it, or am I kind of just freelancing? And he was just telling me, man, hey, you fine? Just find us some players. <laughs> find some players. And, and the way you say that, because that's what the number three, that leads into the next question. Because that's the, um, that's what everyone always says. That's the, the thing you always want to say is, find me some players, find me some players. So, right. Now you talk about recruiting. So we know right. this recruiting thing is 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 is, is, is the lifeline of college athletics. You get Fact. good players, you get good people, most of the time you're gonna be successful. 
Um, talk about like what was your best and worst recruiting story? Uh are we saying on the on the D one level, the best or we said even if you got it on if you got it on when you was junior college, I'm I'm just okay. what I <laughs> Um I mean the best one I guess so far would probably be um uh kid I coached at Booger T. Um he had he had played JV for me since the eighth grade. Me and him had a very good good um, relationship. So once I got on at Norfolk State, he transferred, you know, over from um from uh from a higher level school. And he didn't he didn't do that well there, but and it was a situation where, you know, a lot of guys transferred from there and, and he was, you know, calling me, you know, and you know, during the time I hadn't got on staff yet. And he was calling me saying that um he didn't like it where he was at. And I just thought he was being a typical kid, first year, young, away from home, missing his family, and just, you know, being a chump, really. So I was telling him, man, nah, toughen up, man. You know, you gotta toughen up. But then once I started asking around, and some of the some of my friends that's that's in their business, they they told me that the coach he was playing for was a pretty, you know, tough guy to play for. So once I got on at Norfolk State, he, he was actually my first first on recruit. He just graduated um, this past May. So with him, it's just, you know, being able to see him develop from the eighth grade up until now. And his, you know, his parents trusted me to, because he really didn't want to come home. But they, they, they felt good with, you know, me and with Coach Jones. And, um, you know, Coach Jones, he, he took a chance on he, he took a chance on him. Cause his, his numbers, it really weren't that great leaving from the school he was at, but he uh, ended up being a two time all, all conference player. And really the year he didn't make all conference was really his best year, but it, it wasn't our greatest year. So he didn't make all conference there, but he could have, he, he could have easily been a three time all conference guy. So, I mean, that would be the best one. Just seeing him, him mature, you know, into the young man that he is now is it, it, it was really great to see. And um, my worst one, uh, I don't think I had a a bad one yet at, at you know, um, trying to think, man, my worst one. Uh, probably, probably, I'm going to have to go, go with the JUCO ranks. A kid that I was on recruiting pretty hard from um, local high school and I was in, you know, with his family. I had, you know, cornered, I had cornered everybody, man. You know, I had, whoever I didn't already know, I got to know him cause I knew he would be a good kid to get to, um, you know, make the program jump. And um, he ended up going away to JUCO. Then the next year it didn't go well for him. So he was going to transfer to Brian and Stratton. But that's when I got the job at Norfolk State. So I ended up getting him back, but never got to coach him. But he would have been a, a really good piece if I would have had him that first year. And I was, you know, I coached him AAU. I had known his family. You know, I, I was kind of hurt when I didn't get, you know, that one. And he went away on me. That was one that I was, took me a long time, man, to get over, man. We, but, you know, but you learn in this business that you can't hold hold grudges, and you just got to move on and get to the next player. Yeah, you, it's so true, man. Two great stories right there. That's that's two good ones. Like, and you saw that kid, like you said, with maturation from eighth grade and graduating right. from college. That's what it's about. Right. Um, that was a great story. And then missing out on the kid for one year. Yeah. He still came back, but right. it was too yeah. late for you. <laughs> right. I, 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 like, I like those. I like those. Right. Um, like we we all know this too, man. You when you were a high school coach and I was there for six years, I mean okay. you, you get to go home at night. You know what I'm saying? Like you get the you you your time is not taken up, but what did you have to give up achieving your current level of success? Ah, uh, like you say, man, that 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 family time, man. I I you know, sometimes I I play around with it and say, is it all worth it? 
because um like for me i got a daughter that's about to be 21. she she the uh, junior at vcu i i had a young um so i always you know i always try to um I, I i missed out on a lot of things you know probably with her chasing the basketball you know and and sometimes i say man i wish i could have did this a little different, but you know, uh, but all in all, I'm I'm able to do for her and you know make sure she's you know well taken care of because of basketball. So it's a, it's a that that family time, man. And then you know when you're on the road and you you know I'm missing my son games. Um, like I know last last uh, last season I'll be playing Howard and. It was my son's first rec game. And man, I'm in a hotel. We just got back from um um we had just got back from um um shoot around. And I'm in the hotel. I'm his game is going it's like a 12, 12 o'clock game. I'm calling him, you know, making sure he's right. Man, I'm all the pieces, man, in the hotel. Like, man, I want to be, I, I'm trying to figure out any way I can, how can I get to that game and be back in DC? you know, in time. And it's like, man, I just, you know, those type of moments that you don't want to miss, but you know, in the business we in, I mean, you're going to miss some things. And and it's, you know, so you're sacrificing that, you know. I, I totally agree with you, man. That's what people don't realize. Like, this ain't your, no, this is not normal. Like, you working not 360 <laughs> days, you know, 360 out the year, you know, 12, 15 hour days, and then you're still on call. Cause you never know what's I, gonna happen. <laughs> I haven't been on a vacation, you know, like a personal vacation, in about seven years, man. You know, just far as me, like let's go on vacation where it's not dealing with something with basketball. I feel you. I definitely feel you. Um, but you know what? Though, even if you go on vacation, like you still got to get that phone. You still on the phone? You know what I'm saying? So you, you yep. know, it's like. Man, you can't get away from it. And the only time you really get away from it, maybe those three days at Christmas time when you just say, I'm shutting everything off. You know, that's, yep. that's, that's yep. really the only time you can do it. Um, that's it. <laughs> like, I, I always and it's just three days, like, too. That's that's the most it's going to be is three days. <laughs> you're right. You're right. Um, I like to ask this question, too, because there are scout reports. Everyone knows, man. Like, you can always tell of you watching games, who scout report is. That's right. you invested in your own scout report. And guys are jumping up and down on the sideline. They, you know, their, 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 their temperature gauge just goes up and they're yelling and screaming at kids because, you know, went through this stuff for days and, you know, watch film and these guys just forget all about the stuff. And then, like, you know, that could be, you know, you could do your best scout report, got the calls, you got the actions. And then guys go out and don't play well. Or then you got a scout report where it's, uh, you know, you tell the coach, like, coach, you know, he's made three out of his last 33, really not shooting it well. Then he makes three <laughs> or four in a game. And, 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 and coach, I hey, coach, coach is, about looking at you like, you tell me walking, you can shoot. So, he's walking down the sidelines, looking back at you like, you told us that he could not shoot. What's up, see? And I'm like, so what, I'm just going off the numbers, coach. That's it. I'm going off the numbers. That's that's all. He's having a birthday game today. That's all I can say. So, so let me say this. What was your best and worst scout report? Um, well, we actually, maybe my second year, coach, coach changed the way we do our scout reports. So, we break it down. He wanted everybody because of, like you said, and you can tell when it's somebody's particular scout. So he felt like he wanted everybody to be invested in each game like they are when it's their scout. So we actually break it down where one coach has personnel, one coach has, has the defense, one coach has the offense. So we do each scout like that. Um, I'm trying to think back because now we, you know, I got to go back a few years to go back to my own personal scout. But it was probably uh, my own personal scout. A good one would have been uh, we played Central one year in the tournament in a um, 
um, um, early round game, you know, I don't know if it was probably, probably like the quarters or something. <clears throat> and, and we, um, you know, beat them, beat them pretty well. You know, it was a, and we won by a good margin. And that was my, you know, that was my scout. I mean, Central is, is, is always a tough, it was actually Vickers scout during the season, but Vickers got the, got the, um, got the, got the women's job halfway through the year. So I had to scout for the tournament and, um, you know, we, we ended up getting a win. Um, and, and, you know, they run a lot of actions, a lot of plays. I mean, well coached. Um, so, I mean, that was a good one there. Cause I mean, it's a respected, you know, program. And the guys were like really locked in and, you know, and took everything that I told them and, and got it done. Awesome, awesome. And, and, and it, well, I'm gonna tell you, I guess so since he does it that way, that's kind of interesting. But also Lavelle, like you said, you can do everything. You stop Lavelle, you know, he runs a lot of stuff. And and when you give it to him, he'll, he'll just change and just start going freestyle. Like, and then like. Yeah, like in the middle of the game, he's going to switch it up and, you know, and do something different. So it's kind of hard to even, you got to go on the actions more so than the plays. So true, because I, I I've coached I coached against him, and I mean we're right. giving it to him. We're up fifteen twenty. All of a sudden, he just changed how he plays, and it's like, <laughs> up front. yeah. So I, I, I understand that you see him twice at least, at least twice a year. So I can right. understand that. One. Um, what's the biggest challenge you think you've experienced since you've been in college coaching? Biggest challenge. Uh, let me see. Biggest challenge. Um, probably the, the time management, you know, with, I mean, far as, um, are we saying just overall? I mean, well, yeah. nah, okay. I'm not going to say time management. I'm going to say the, the, the whole process of the networking and being able to move up in the business, you know, cause you may. You know, people always have that stigma on once you go into MEAC, you get stuck and this, that. So you always got that in the back of your mind, which, you know, I went to uh, HBCU. So it's not the the end of the world for me. You know, I'm a I'm a HBCU guy. You know, I'm, I'm fine with that. But you also, you know, financially, and you want to get what you think that you deserve too to take care of your family. So, you know, it's, it's a little different money. At another level, I I, so I I agree with you. I agree with you on that because it's right. it's uh you know you talk about the the, the you know getting labeled basically. I mean, right. I I was fortunate. I was an HBCU product like you. Right. But you just I mean it's all about getting breaks, like you said, the networking piece. Right. You know, and and guys saying I believe in this guy no matter what. Um, and, and that that's what it's about. So I know yeah. I know you gonna get your break because I know I know right. how hard you work. Guys, watch you do your work. So I, I definitely feel like you're gonna right. have a chance to, to 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 progress or to to grow in this business. I definitely, right. I definitely and, feel that. And then for me, you know, coming from Boo Williams' program, you know, I always, you know, you have that backing. But it's been so many years now that it's like people don't even, you know, a lot of people don't know unless you know. You know what I mean? Unless you see me coach AAU back then or you know, because it's not something that's talked about a lot. So, you know, having that that good backing is kind of once you so many years in the business, it kind of goes away because people don't know that hey, he does come from that Boo Williams family. You're right. You're 100 percent right. Now I'm gonna ask you this: um, Do you do you ever find that there are things about you that people might misunderstand? Um. I mean, I'm a pretty mellow guy, so you know, I'm I'm pretty laid back, keep to myself. Um, so they they may think that, oh, I mean, I, I'm, you know, they may they may think that I'm standoffish, but I'm not, you know, just from from my look maybe. But um, you know, once you talk to me, I mean, I don't think think anybody who really knows me would would feel like that. 
but just from the outside on looking in, they they may have that opinion, you know, they without knowing me. I agree with you 100%. Until they get to know you, that's the one right. thing. Like, I was fortunate just to be, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm from the Hampton Roads area, right. but like, I also saw you when you was coaching Boo. I also right. saw you when I was at Old Dominion. Right, you were at New York right. State. So, like you said, until people get to know you, right, you know, you know, they they that's just the how they look at you and perceive right. you. But like I said, like you you're a you're a great and genuine guy. Like I yeah. think, like I said, once guys figure that out, it'll be a lot. Right. right. Um you you know, we all educators in this business, you're all about, you know, you're teaching all the time. That's um, right. But like what do you try to teach your players besides basketball? Uh, the main thing is just being a stand-up guy, man. Like, you got to – you want to always, you know, not that you're going to always do, you know, do right or be 100% right all the time, but just be just be genuine in whatever you're doing and and be respectful, man. Just that's, – that's my main thing. I, I, I like, you know, being around young, res- respectful men and, and helping, you know – build them into that and just show them the way. So I just try to always stay on point. And anytime that they have any questions, um, I just try to treat them, you know, like I would treat, treat my own kids, man. I mean, that's the main thing. And I, you know, want them to be high character because I just think that that high character goes a long ways in life, you know, and, and, and people will always tend to, and when you need a lending hand, They'll always be there for you if you are a high character and a genuine person. I, I agree with you so much on that one, man. Um, what are your best and worst memories in coaching? Best and worst memories in coaching. Uh we have to say mm, probably losing that MEAC championship game. We lost on the last possession. Um, I think it was, was was a two or three point, you know, margin. Um, we had a shot, a shot at the end. We missed it, and I, it was a game where our um, our top shooter he led the nation in, in three point shooting. He was he was actually hurt and didn't say anything until until right before tip off. I mean, you know, right after the the uh, starting lineups he called he comes comes by and say coach if you see me moving a little slow or if I you know kind of gimpy I twisted my ankle last night and it's pretty bad and I'm like oh man so he doesn't even get a, a shot attempt you know not not only did he, he didn't score he didn't get a, a attempt and um so he was really just a decoy all game and you know that was a team that, that I felt like really really was a a team that had a chance to really do something like that's a team that could have, you know, won a play in game and then probably, you know, was, was good enough for an upset. And, and, you know, each year and you want to have a team like that, but, you know, realistically, you just don't always have that chance. And, and that was a year that, that we had really, you know, had really worked hard. Everybody was, was locked in and everybody knew the task at hand we just came up short you know so that was a that was a tough one there it, it took me a while to you know get over that and then for me I mean just on a personal level I mean so many things happen for you you know once you get to the tournament man it's just you know it it could it'd be a life changer really you know and um so that was a bad one I mean that that one still haunts me to this day because I mean we were so close I mean it was right there Right there. Um, probably the best one in coaching uh, would probably be in between um, winning the regular season championship and the upset of Alabama in um, NIT. You know, those those two are right. You know, are right along the line. You know, about the about the same as being the you know best best memory yeah anytime you get upset for power five that's always big uh, right you know, that's, that's what people don't get and I, i'm trying to remember 
and I, I can say it now because I'm on the other side. But one right. of those, I'm not gonna say the official name, but one of those tournaments, they 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 got you. They they I mean, I, so I can I can say that. I can say that. <laughs> you might not say that. Right. We right. all know who it is. I, I mean, I see him all the time. So um, yeah. <laughs> They so they really really got us though. I yeah, mean, that was a game changer right there. Oh no question, no question. <laughs> that was I a can, game I changer. Can say, I can say that. I'm gonna say it for you. You and, right. and, and Coach Jones. I just don't want y'all getting fined. But I definitely <laughs> right. say it. Right. Oh um, yeah. Like, yeah. I, it's, I know it's a short stint. You've been in it, but like, um, and it could anything could have come up. Um, maybe you don't have to answer for. But what was the most stressful situation you think you faced? Um, in, in, in college basketball? Um, far as um, um, uh, off the court issue with a player or like dealing with it could be, it could be either or. Um, probably the most stressful would be we had a player that was, you know, actually on that team, you know, that was in that MEAC championship game that he was the year before. Um, he had a lot going on off the court, but it really was like none of it was really his fault. He had he had got into a situation where, you know, he 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 had somebody that was you know a uh, 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 a female friend that was just you know doing a lot to 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 put his college basketball you know playing days in jeopardy, and um. So he was he was going through a lot. I was very close to him. He was probably one of the favorite, probably a, one of my favorite guys who I've coached, you know, over the years. And um, he just a, is a, you know, a great dude. He's he's you know he comes from from a rough background, so you know he didn't make all the best on decisions, but he didn't deserve what was going on. So trying to help him and find lawyers for him, and you know to get through that situation, going to court with him, and just, you know, being there for him, it, it, it kind of took a toll even on me because it was like, man, just seeing him suffer through a situation that really wasn't, he didn't really do anything to, you know, to warrant, you know, everything that was going on with him, man. So it, that was a, a tough one there. I feel you, I feel you, man. And, and I'm gonna ask you this, cause this is, that was stressful. It might right. be this one may be strange. What is the strangest thing a player has done outside of the basketball court? Because I'm sure you've seen some <laughs> interesting um, things. Ah, let me see. Play it off, coach. Strangest thing. Mm, I gotta think on that one, man. That's that's that. We might gotta come back to that one. Might gotta come because it be so much I'll, goes I'll on, come, man. I'll come back. I'll come so, back to it. So much goes on. Yeah, I, I've seen like I mean, some guys have said some things, and I laugh because I'm like, yo, I'm going through some similar situations too. So, and you, and right. you, you'll forget, like you was like, dang man, actually that story was better than that one. But you know, a lot of times we I mean, forget about it. I mean, well, I guess, I, I mean, I guess one strange thing would be you know, the 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 whole you know incident that happened at Howard. You know, with the, I mean, that was that you know. You see a lot of things go on, you know, in a game, but it normally doesn't ever get to that. So, you know, they're having a, a all out, you know, pretty much team, you know, brawl after, you know, when, you know, going through the handshake line, really. Game, game over. <laughs> game over. And and you could kind of see the game was like that. So we probably shouldn't have shook hands. And then, you know, at Howard, everybody goes down the same to the same locker room area. You go through the same door and you got to go downstairs. So that was just that whole, the, all those, that whole thing was just like, man, what is really happening right now? You're like, how to get to, to, to this point? Yeah. So that that's what, like you said, that's outside the basketball court because you right. definitely was going handshake. Right. So yeah, yeah. I mean, the game was over. I mean, the game was over already. You know, it was, and you know, it was a very intense game. We were, you know. And, and it was, man, and then the and then the aftermath was just like, man, how did this get to this? And it just, you know, was a, a, a something unfortunate, but you know, it, it 
it happened. It was very strange and how they blow up that fast. But, you know, when you got those guys, their tempers going and, you know, it was an intense game where we just probably should have not shook hands. I, I feel you. I feel you. I'm going to ask you this question. I know you work for a great guy, Rob Jones. Um, like you said, like, he, I reached out to him first. Right. It was like, I want to get CJ on. He said it would right. be great. You know, right. so he speaks highly of you. Um, you know, just, just the friendship that me and um, Rob have. And I know, like I said, you work for him. And, but like, I want you to also look outside of this. If you had a chance to work for anyone else in men's basketball and you want to move up, like, right. who are the guys you've seen or you say, man, I would love to work with him, pick his brain, you know, like, I mean, you have aspirations. You want to move up? Right. You want to be right. a coach? Like, who, who would you, who do you look at and say, man, I, I would love to kind of work for him? I mean, I mean, like you said, you know, I love my job right now. Coach Jones has been great for me. I've learned a lot. He's 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 definitely looked out for me in a lot of different ways. You know, I've grown a lot since I've been with him. And um, you know, I it's, it's really a joy to work for him. Um trying to think who would I, you know, outside of him. I think I I like Frank Martin. You know, I I I think that's that's one one guy that, you know, I just like the the way he he, you know, goes about his business. You know, it seems like he he's he's my kind of guy, man. Straight, straightforward, no nonsense, but seems genuine though. And, and and seems like he, you know, he gets the most out of his guys. Um probably also um um Hamilton, you know, I'll probably, you know, th that would be another one. Um right off the top. Uh, I mean, those probably the two that jump out at me. I mean, I really never, never thought a whole lot about it, you know. But those two that you know jump out at me. Those are two great ones, man. I, I mean, you right. hit it right on the head. Like, you know, Frank Martin mirrors your personality. Like those, right. you know. So like, right. you know, right. like so he is a genuine guy. Like, I mean, right. yep. he's he's a tough, hard nose. He coached in Miami. You know, yep. Gritty, you know, as a high Gritty, school coach, Gritty. right? So Gritty. he understands, but then at the same time, he has a big heart at the same time. So that, that's right. what a lot of people misunderstand about him. Is, I mean, Leonard Hamilton is just a legend. I don't think people, right. he's most underappreciated coach in college basketball, and a lot of people forget about him when you start talking about some of the the great college basketball coaches. But right, Leonard Hamilton is. It's really, really good, man. And I think a lot of people missed the boat on that. Um, what's the what's the biggest accomplishment you've experienced as from a college coach? And it doesn't always have to translate to wins and losses. But like, what's your biggest accomplishment? And it may be you talking about the kid that was you saw from you know yeah. eighth grade on, or a story like that. Um, I mean, he would definitely be you know one because I, I you know. He's a kid that's been through a lot, and 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 I know that he he appreciates everything that I've done, you know, for him, and and I mean, so he he's he's definitely, you know, once he graduated, that that, that definitely was a proud moment for me because he would he was a, a kid I've seen, you know, since he was 14, 15 years old, man, grow. Um, another uh, proud. Uh, I mean, I mean, like I say, I mean, you know, I've only I'm going into my sixth year, so that MEAC championship on a regular season, I mean, that was a good, you know, that just all the hard work, you know, is 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 you 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 see it, you know, is 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 right there, right? and when you get to that finish line, you know, it would have been icing on the cake to to win that MEAC tournament as well, but I would probably say the regular season championship. Awesome, man. I'm, I'm gonna just kind of might throw you for a loop a little bit, maybe not. Like, what movie or TV show title best describes your week? Uh, okay, TV show. I'm a, I'm a, I mean, like you say, I'm a, I mean, like I told you, I'm a easy, you know, laid back guy. 
I, I would probably go good times, man. I'm a, I'm gonna say 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 good times because it's just you know, you never know what's going. What, what, what I mean, what's it gonna be? I like to laugh. I like to have fun, but you know, I'm a hard worker though. So, you know, good times was a, you know, that's a, that's a, and I just think that, you know, all this, you know, I'm, I'm coaching basketball, man, you know, for, for a pretty decent living. And, 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 you know, I'm never upset about going to work. So I'm just, I'm, I'm, I'm having a good time, man. Good times. Love it, man. I love it. Um, the, the thing I always like to say is what's your favorite uh, word or phrase you like to use? Favorite word or phrase? Ah, uh, ah, uh, genuine man, genuine. I I just like genuine people, man. I like to always try to be genuine and try to, you know, right or wrong. I I I am who I am. I'm gonna be, you know, genuine and and be respectful. Those are like two, you know, two two key key things in my life that I always try to, you know, go by, man. I, I think if, if you're genuine and you're always, you know, respecting others and make sure that you, you know, it demand a respect too, that everything usually goes, you know, goes okay. Awesome. What's the best piece of advice you've ever been given? Best, best piece of advice. Um, probably say don't don't worry about you know the things that are out of your control just control what what you can control and, and outside of that don't stress it you know which that's hard to do but I try to live by that you know I try to don't worry about the things that I cannot control love it love it what hey CJ what does success mean to you success Ah, that's a, that's a, that's a good one. Um, yeah, that's a good one. For me, it's just, man, a peace of mind, man. Just, you know, being, like I say, genuine is a, is a big part of my life, man. Being genuine. So just genuinely being happy, man. Just, you know, I mean, and, and that could be many different things, you know, but I'm, I'm probably most, you know, happy uh, uh you know around my family you know with my you know i mean with my kids i i i like to be be around you know family um and, and i know um i mean i mean for my mother just you know making her proud you know she she if i know if 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 she's proud then i'm doing something right because she awesome. i mean she you want to finish that yeah, because I, I mean, uh, she, you know, she raised me, you know, single mom, and, and and she she always, you know, pretty, pretty, you know, critical, you know what I'm saying? She, she's, she's, she's always been critical, stayed, stayed on me since I was a young, still, you know, still tries to do it now, <laughs> and I'm, uh, but, um, you know, I, I know that if, 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 if she's, she's proud of me, then I'm doing the right thing. I like it. I like that. Um, I know you're you're not a self promoter. You mean you? I mean, like you walk around, you're quiet. You kind of said that earlier, people, but like you get a lot of stuff done. I don't think people realize that. But right. if you had to choose three adjectives to describe yourself, what would you choose? Um. Uh, uh, Loyal, uh, passionate, and um, hard worker. You know, I mean, I mean, I'm a worker, man. I, I'm gonna figure it out. You know, because like you say, it's no handbook, no handbook. So I mean, I, I just always, all my life, man. You know, I mean, like I said. I, I had my daughter young and I had to figure it out, you know, so I've been figuring things out. I mean, since I was 17 years old, trying to just, you know, figure it out, figure it out. Working, you know, working. 
I love that answer, man. I love it. Um, I'm, uh, what person, you probably already answered it a little bit. Okay. Um, but what person and or event has had the most influence on your life? Uh, and, I mean, does the, can it be too different? Or does that, because. I mean, I mean, I, I'm sure mom is big because you already right. mentioned her. So, I, I, right. yeah, I mean, yeah. It's, right. that's so, who it is. Right. So, I mean, I mean, definitely my, my mom, but, you know, far as the influence on my life, but far as the event was, like I said, having my daughter at a young age, because, you know, my life changed. Like, I, it stopped me from going to go play college basketball because I didn't, didn't, you know, it wanted to be far away from her. And the schools that were, you know, I'm recruiting me were a little ways away. So I had to make a, a decision on, do I want to be in my daughter's life every day or do I want to play college basketball? So, and you know, that, that, but that, you know, it made me grow up quick though. It made me grow up because I knew somebody else was, was, was counting on me. And, um, you know, she couldn't, couldn't have any excuses, you know, cause now it's not, a, not just about me. So I, so I had to get to it and figure it out. I love it, man. Um, how has coaching affected your life? Um, it's it's been great, you know. Overall, it's been great, you know. It's it's definitely you know got me in a pretty good place financially, doing something that I love to do that I would do for free, you know. Maybe not put the same amount of time into it, but I would definitely coach, getting paid or not getting paid. I would still be a coach either way. So, you know, it's just a, a blessing to to coach basketball, you know, the game of basketball and 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 raise, you know, try to try to, you know, build young men, you know, out of these guys who you deal with is is it's a cause you gotta think like, man, I mean, how many people get to each year, 13 to 15 guys that I get to try to, you know, help mold as, you know, and try to build them to um on to be good young men to go out and and be a successful adult. So that's you know that's that's that it, it, it feels good to you know to be able to do that each year. You know a lot of people don't don't impact you know that many people lives. I mean like ever you know and I'm getting to deal with thirteen to fifteen lives each year. So that that's 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 a a blessing right there. Oh man, great great stuff. Um, and I, I like to end with this question all the time. Like, knowing what you know now, what would you tell your younger self to prepare for as an assistant coach? Uh, don't take anything personal because it's, it's going to be a lot of things that happen throughout your career, you know, that you may not agree with or understand. But you just gotta, you know, keep working, man. You gotta just get through it, and um, and 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 and, and do what's asked of you. Um, another thing would be, I mean, probably to do as much networking as possible, man. Get to know people. That's that's like in the business that you know that we in, man. That's that's like the one of the most important things is is getting to know people and and genuinely, you know, finding, you know, finding out about them and, and, and really get to know them because you, you know, you speak to people in passing, you see them at different tournaments, AAU events, and, but it's not really, you just speaking and going on about your business, man. I wish um, when I was younger that I would have, have reached out to more guys and just pick their brain a little bit, you know? So now, now when I get that first scout, I'm, I'm, I've already picked a guy's brain that can kind of gave me some pointers on what to do instead of I'm just figuring it out by myself, really. And um, that's 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 one thing I wish I would have done more of at a young age was just got with some older guys and pick their brains a little bit more. Well, we always say this, and, and it's more so our fault, especially guys in my range, like you know. I think guys worry about 
I'm not saying me personally, but guys worry about the next guy behind them. Are they going to take their job instead of right. saying, no, man, like this is, and that's what I've always done. I didn't care about the guys, the, the, the guys who were behind me. I'm like, look, man, I want you guys to be better than me. So yep. I always said, you know, these are the things you need to watch out for. Right. Things of that case, because it doesn't matter about you taking my job. If you can be better right. than me, if I if I can pay it forward, I'm happy with that. And that's why I think yeah. a lot of guys ahead of you right. didn't reach back and say to, to, to guys your age, right. like, you know, yo, man, no, you don't want to do that. You know, you got to dress this way. This is how you're professional. Yep. Like, and yep. I think a lot of times it's, it's catching up with the, you know, guys your age, like, and I could have been so much better if I would have done that and or right. if I would have networked. Yeah. But it should have been our job reaching out to you guys, you know, right. like, at, at the same time. So. Like, like I don't know if, if you remember, but remember we were in over across the water in Hampton. Yep. And we went to Crackle Barrel. And yeah. sat down, right? And and, and you 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 drop drop a lot of gems, you know, that I that, that you might not even know that you gave me, but I, I definitely took it in and, you know, put it to our use. And, and I mean, that was probably, I mean, I mean, that was a, at least three or four years ago, definitely. It might have been, Correct. might have yeah. been five years ago. <laughs> yeah, but that, was, and that's um, what it's about, though, and that's what it should yeah. be. Um, I just think a lot of guys my age just got caught up in like worrying about the younger guys taking their job and, and it should right. be about that way. Right. You know, that's what I say. But look, man, I want to thank you again, man, for, for being a guest on the show and being on Is there anything you want to leave with the guests before we, uh, before we go with the viewers? Um, I think we, you, you know, I think we covered it all. Um, I appreciate you, you know, calling, calling coach Jones and, and, and reaching out to me and get on the show. Cause I was, you know, I definitely, had a had a good time on doing the show and um anything you ever need from me and you know how to um, get in contact with me. <laughs> yes sir man well you know thanks again and I want to thank you viewers for watching another great show stay tuned for the next guest as we get them on mass see you next time and stay safe <laughs>